And welcome to this week's review. And well, knowing what you can see, and more importantly, what you can't see, I'm going to ask future editing Paul to have a quick word with you. So over to him. I know someone's going to ask the question. Let me show you what this t-shirt actually looks like. And now back to your schedule programming. Well, we're looking at Heed this week, and in particular, we're looking at Heed's CD Transport. This is a high-end CD Transport and it's priced at £2,899. Sometimes I write reviews for general investigation. Product A has appeared on the scene. What does it do? Is it any good? That kind of thing. On the other hand, I do videos to answer specific targeted questions posed by myself or from viewers like you. This review exists to answer a specific question that I and you, well, some of you, have posed over the past several months. Now, a wee while ago, I reviewed Audiolab's 6000 CDT CD Transport. This is a £399 CD Transport that produces quite stunning performance for that price. As long as you utilise a top quality coax cable, which links the two, if you have your 6000 CDT and you have your coax, if you just upgrade the DAC, leave everything else as it is, just upgrade the DAC, you will hear improved sound as you upgrade, as you spend more, until you keep upgrading and you hit, I don't know, £3,000 or so. That is when the CDT becomes a bottleneck. At that point, you really want to upgrade the 6000 CDT. So the question is, what's next? That's why this video exists. Now, CD transports around the 3K price point, well, they're not particularly numerous. CD players, sure. CD transports, well, not so much. Now, I know of a Cyrus example priced around two and a half, two and a half thousand pounds. I think Moon has a similar transport around that kind of price. Thus, if you follow my own rationale, this CD transport from Heed stands as the next possible upgrade in line, should you buy one if you're looking to upgrade your transport. So before we go any further, let's talk techie, shall we? And let's take a closer look. Welcome to the Closer Look section for the Heed Thesis Delta CD Transport. And what do we have here? Well, as you can see, this is a relatively small half-width chassis, which, if footprint is any concern of yours in your listening room, might appeal just on that basis alone. Looking at the front, and because of that half-width design, the CD tray dominates the front fascia. Also, because of that half width presentation, don't go expecting to see large fancy OLED screens plastered on the front because, well, there isn't one. This is a tray mounted affair which will please those who dislike the grab and pull CD slot transports. To the right of the tray are three large, easy to use command buttons. We have open and close for that CD tray, there's a stop button and a play button. Simple, direct, obvious, and easy to use. Underneath that lot, well, you can see a simple output showing the track number and track time progression. This rather bright display, or at least it was when I initially turned it on, can be dimmed or even switched off via the accompanying remote. 
And let's quickly look at that remote, shall we, while we're talking about it, because the remote is relatively small, but not too small. It's simple, it's to the point, and it features the essentials. Again, I like it. The remote includes more CD transport buttons. I'm talking things like fast forward and fast reverse, next and previous track. There's a repeat button and so on. The remote performed well during tests, incidentally, even with barriers in the way of me and the CD transport, the CD player reacted well to commands. I like the fact that these extra commands have been relegated to the remote, while only the most essential commands are on the front fascia itself. Because of that, in my opinion, the balance between the aesthetics and usability is maintained. Let's look at the rear now, and on the back are a pair of lineouts, and we'll come to those later on. Plus, there's a selection of ways to connect your transport to a suitable DAC. You can make a choice from coax, optical, I2B, and BNC. Moving further to the right is an IEC power port and a rocker power switch. Inside, well, the transport utilizes a Sanyo SF HD850 transport combined with a Philips servo with a real time microcontroller support and custom data handling firmware, which has been biased by HEED towards timing. And timing is something we will look at a little bit later on in the sound tests. The frame of the transport is rigid and metal. Even so, he has added its own vibration damping suspension to lower the noise floor. That lot sits next to linear power supplies with high quality extras, such as an Erlink transformer, Mundorf capacitors, and so on. The internal control and communication has been designed as to avoid any interference with digital or analog audio signals. Hence, noise really should be low on this one. Again, we'll talk about that in the sound quality tests, and would you believe it? Here they are. So let's see if this heed transport sounds any good, shall we? And let's go to those sound quality tests. <laughs> Welcome to the sound quality tests for the HEED Thesis Delta CD transport. And these sound quality tests, well, they're in two parts, I suppose. Bear with me for part one, and well, you'll see what I mean when we get there. Now, for anyone who's seen my recent Audio Lab Omnia All in One review, link above, you will know that I like to drag in a rather battered copy of my New Order Republic CD album to see how. The transport copes. It's a bit scuffed, it's a bit scratched. The Audio Lab 6000 CDT, well, that has no issues at all. You put the disc in there, plays that disc first time. The Audio Lab Omnia, which has a slightly different transport, in case you haven't seen that review, didn't like this disc at all and refused to play it, even though it had no issues with other discs in my collection. This New Order disc was too damaged for the Omnia to handle. So how did the Heed cope? Well, I'm happy to report that the New Order disc worked first time in the thesis. Next, how did it sound compared to the CDT? The answer is yes, the sound is different, and yes, it's improved. But the reason to my ears was not the improvement I expected. Now I'm used to hearing the move from lower cost products to higher end versions of the same, characterized by a lowering of the noise floor. The noise floor from the Thesis Delta, well, it didn't really shift any further downwards, and that surprised me. What I did get from the Heed appeared to be an improved sense of timing. Music offered a much more improved focus, the sense of structure, was very impressive from the thesis. 
the lower cost CDT by comparison has frequencies which they kind of bleed at the edges. That is the edge of notes, the edge of instruments sound in comparison to the heed. Oh, a little fuzzy, not quite accurate. The heed, on the other hand, drew a firm line around each instrument. The drum starts here, it says, and the drums end there. This heightened tonal accuracy, meaning that drums had a more realistic sound. They offered a newly found precision as well. Guitars, well, they started and they stopped on the nail. The spin-off to that feature was the emergence of more subtle detail. This particular track features three distinctly subdued instruments. There is a rack of bells playing during the song that you can best hear during the middle eight. There's a very shy tambourine in there and a rather subtle acoustic guitar. All of these instruments were better seen, better heard, better tracked via the heed. Even so, despite the improvements and despite the enhancements, I found myself shifting rather uncomfortably in my seat. I heard improvements, but I wanted the thesis delta to go further. Part of the problem, and this kept on nagging at me, I could still hear a relatively high noise floor. There were high frequency noise elements milling around the soundstage. So despite the improvements in focus and timing, the noise floor bugged me. There wasn't a drop and I expected a drop and it bothered me. And we're back. Now, everything you've just seen and heard in terms of the sound quality tests, well, that happened on a particular day. Day one, let's call it day one. Something didn't sit right. And when that happens, I get a little itch at the back of my neck because something wasn't right. It didn't feel right. So I did the usual thing. I checked my hi-fi system. Maybe something was on when it should have been off. Maybe something was off when it should have been on. Maybe something was disconnected. Maybe something was installed incorrectly. I checked, I double checked, everything was fine. So I looked at the thesis delta itself. Maybe there was an issue there. It seemed okay, seemed to be working without any problems. It was at that point I opened a couple of emails from my contact at Heed. Now I did this because I was looking for techie information to add to the review. And it was at this point, it was at this point that I read these words in one email, and I quote, the unit as supplied includes the Heed Audio DAC plug-in card, which makes the transport into a fully fledged CD player. That was it. I knew it. That was what I was hearing. I wasn't, in fact, listening to a pure transport with the Heed's optional slot in DAC installed into the thesis delta, what I was listening to was a fully fledged integrated CD player. Well, gotta say, I felt relieved. I thought I was going slightly mad. Well, more mad than usual. Hey, and the itch in the base of my neck, that wrongness I was hearing, it was the built in DAC card. Now, incidentally, if you do want to investigate the Thesis Delta CD player, as opposed to Transport, the integrated CD player with the DAC card included, and I'll show you the DAC card in a second. I'll come to camera with it. It can be yours for obviously a more expensive price, £3,249. Now, when I talk about this DAC card and I'm talking about this wrongness, don't think I'm criticizing the DAC card. It's not the sound quality of the DAC card I'm discussing here, because I never listened to the DAC card in operation. I have no idea. The DAC card could sound wonderful. It could sound amazing. But that's not part of this review. It's not part of this video. However, just the mere presence of that DAC card, well, it introduced high frequency noise into the sound chain. And this is why I go on and on about how good CD transports are for general CD sound. You have a CD transport, you separate the DAC with a coax cable. You have those two boxes 
CD transport and the DAC separated, just that distance alone introduces isolation. With isolation, it lowers vibration affecting those two elements. And there's also no migration of high frequency noise from one electron box to another. Again, all helps to lower the noise floor. But look, before we go any further, let's have a quick look at the offending DAC card, shall we? And here it is. It's only a relatively small board. You can see some text detail under that finger there. Let me see if I can get it closer. I'm not sure if it'll retain. Can you see that? He'd very kindly sent it in case I wanted to review it. And well, I thought I'd concentrate on the CD transport itself because that was answering the question in the video. So that's the DAC card taken out of the chassis. And that's what I did. I opened up the chassis itself. I disconnected the DAC card, put that to one side, as you've seen, and put everything back together. And I had a listen. Did anything change? Oh yes, this was more like it. This was why I bought a ticket. This was what I was looking for. First up, well, you can guess what's coming next, can't you? The noise floor. Well, down it went. For the price, the Audiolab 6000 CDT offers superb low noise performance, but in relative terms, when compared to the Thesis Delta, without the DAC card, I hasten to add, the Audiolab can't compete. The Heed drops the noise floor, offering a more relaxing listening experience and encourages, at the same time, far more details to come through. The improvement in general terms, well, the mid-range and the treble seemed a lot smoother. In specifics, well, at the beginning of this New Order track, there is a notable exchange between the synth and the guitar. With the CDT, both of those elements are pushed together and I'm getting them in one lump. With the heed, both of those elements are more separated. You can individually hear each instrument coming at you at the same time, but they are separated. You can recognize little subtle elements from each instrument, and that's rather exciting. Oh, and I don't know whether you caught it, but earlier on I said there was a tambourine playing at various points of the track. I mentioned three rather shy, subtle instruments, the tambourine being one of them. Well, the tambourine doesn't exist. What I was actually hearing was a ride cymbal. When I was listening to the Thesis Delta, I suddenly realized the tambourine was actually a ride cymbal. And I had that, oh, moment when the realization hit me. So, so much for New Order. I then moved on to jazz and the jazz pianist Jeff Kiza with his album, a Columbia album called Turn Up the Quiet and the track Stompin' at the Savoy. Now, what impressed me here was the quality of the bass from the upright bass. The lower frequencies appeared to reach that bit further downwards, giving the music gravitas, a weight that applied a firm authority in the beat. And this is a jazz track, don't forget. The strong, heavy lump of bass provided a certain amount of clout and a sense of muscle. Again, the focus around the upper frequencies was impressive. What did stand out here was the newfound precision that the Thesis Delta was able to apply to the piano and the saxophone. The track had a new sense of confidence because that accuracy provided a sense of the definite. The music knew where it was heading. It sounded like a plan that was really coming together, as you might find in the A-Team. So how do I conclude this rather intriguing review? Well, let me give you a few final thoughts, shall I? And then we'll look at pros and cons, and then I'll give you a rating. Because I've been comparing the 6000 CDT from Audiolab and the Thesis Delta from Heed at rather dramatically different price points, some of you will be asking, is the Heed worth what? My maths are failing me. Seven times or so 
the price of the audio lab? Well, my reply would be, when sound quality is mused upon, I personally think that's not the way to think about it. Applying maths to art, that is. What I would instead consider is this. After demoing the thesis delta, and I would recommend a demo, what you've got to ask yourself is, does the heed provide you with a sense of music that you feel is important, is necessary, and after hearing the heed, a type of presentation that you can't do without. And that's how I buy hi-fi. If I'm looking to buy a CD transport or post speakers, turn table, whatever it might be, and I'm listening and I'm demoing that particular product, and suddenly I'm hearing this music and I'm thinking to myself, okay, that's it. I can't live without this sonic improvement I'm hearing. This box, it's staying right here. What I'm not thinking is, well, is this box three times as good as that box? Maybe it should be four. If it was four times as good, I'd get it. But no, it's only three times. No, I don't do that. I just think to myself, am I being affected by the improvements? Is the difference enough to blow me away? If it is, the box stays. I don't get into the maths. It's an emotional thing. It's not a scientific thing. If I'm being affected by the music in a wonderful way, then I'm happy. Then I'll buy the box. Ultimately, the Heed Thesis Delta is a fine transport. It offers real sonic improvements. It has you nodding in approval. From that angle, there's enough improvement here from the Heed to supply that sort of consideration. The Heed Thesis Delta has a definite personality. It has a correctness, a precision that some will hear once and will just have to have in their lives for all time. In short, the Heed Thesis Delta is a valid choice when you're looking to make a CD transport upgrade from the Audiolab 6000 CDT. Video done, question I hope answered. So let's look at a few pros and cons. First up, I was very happy with that focus, especially the mid-range focus and the precision. I was very happy to hear an increase in tonal realism and an enhanced accuracy. Bass authority, I didn't really expect that, but the enhanced timing actually helped those bass frequencies. Small footprint, well, if you're short of space, that will be a big deal all on its own. Low noise, well, yes, eventually got there with the low noise once I took that DAC card out of the chassis. And it made a big difference to the overall sound quality. And let's not forget the usability. I think Heed was correct in sharing the controls on the front fascia and then dumping the rest onto the remote control. I thought the decision there was very good indeed. All of that goes to show why I have given the Heed Thesis Delta CD Transport an award-winning rating. It's gonna have a groovy, and it's got eight out of 10. Congratulations to Heed. And that's it, folks. Thank you very much for staying to the end of this video. If you look somewhere below, could I ask you to click on the like and subscribe? It would help this channel to grow yet further. Also down below, there are live chapter headings if you want to navigate around this video. There are links to my Patreon page. There's some exclusive stuff over there if you haven't already had a look. There are links to my website. There's all kinds of exclusive stuff over there you don't see here. And my Facebook group, which you're welcome to join. And in addition to that, there is my Patreon page, which directly supports this channel and keeps it going. If you check out the Patreon page, you'll also see lots of exclusive stuff. There's some buyer's guides, there's some exclusive videos, there's my hi-fi tour, and lots more. Now, I'll be back on Friday with Fun Tune Fridays. Probably a magazine, I would say. Not too sure right now, but I think it'll be a mag. And I hope to have your company when we get to that point. Until next time, folks. Bye-bye for now.